this video, I would like to explain how you can integrate the XB API management solution easily into your Jenkins pipeline so that all of your developers just check in the APIs they want in the APIs as code approach. And then the Jenkins pipeline takes over and replicates that state into the API management solution from XWay. Um, let's say uh, you have a lot of developers and these developers should work um, on their own in the in the self-service mode. So that means they would should be self-responsible about how an API should be replicated into the API into the API management system instead of talking to a centralized or a team of Jenkins administrators and ask the team over and over again, could you please set up a new workflow for my API one, for my API five, four, and so on. No, these these guys here on the left should be responsible for that. And the solution Jenkins provides for that is to, is to define so-called Jenkins files. And these Jenkins files are picked up by a plugin or by plugins which are available for Bitbucket and for GitHub and for GitLab by organizational folders. These organizational folders have the responsibility or the purpose to scan for project that are, uh, let's say, in a certain team or in a certain owner um, based on GitHub or Bitbucket and then create that workflows automatically. But these guys are responsible to control what happens here. And uh, the an overview about that process then looks like so that um, a developer or a Jenkins administrator has configured um, that organizational folder. And um, now the developer is responsible to put in that Jenkins file in his own a, uh, version control system, then he is pro he provides the API design together with the API configure configuration file. He creates the desired state of the API he wants to have because this is used by Swagger Promote to replicate that API into the API management solution. And a POM Maven POM file is used to control the uh, Jenkins pipeline. And when it is time, then a developer is releasing that API to become maybe version 1.0. And then a similar process happens on all, on on all non-dev stages. But here, other people are responsible to control the desired state. What kind of API or what which API version may be, uh, he wants or an administrator wants to have maybe on a production system and that kind of stuff is then managed in that version control system. So this is basically a different one. Okay, um, let's say we have these two APIs actually in my API management system. So that means two different uh, weather APIs. And I would like to add now a new API completely based on a pipeline approach. So um, I have a number of repositories in my personal GitHub account. And um, you see, I have already filtered for that dash API dash because I would like to have this API project to be considered as an API management or desired state API project and this one here. All the others are not some, I don't know why GitHub is, is offering that to me because I'm saying, please show me all the um, API repositories dash API dash. Okay, but anyway, this these are the two ones. So now let's say I'm for a moment um, a Jenkins administrator. And what I have to do is, first of all, I have to set up the credentials because we have to talk, in my case, with the GitHub API. And in order to do so, I have to set up credentials. And I have named that credentials. Uh, I gave the ID GitHub. The other thing I'm doing is, or I have done, is to install a plugin. And the plugin we are looking for, which must be installed, is that GitHub um, source plugin. GitHub source, uh, that's hard to find, I think. But this is the plugin I'm looking for, that GitHub branch source plugin. Um, yeah, and with that plugin installed, I can create a new item in GitHub, which is a so-called GitHub organization. And um, this enter the item name. I know this not, doesn't become the item name. That's why I can already give it um, the owner. You see in a second what there, why I'm doing so. Yeah, because this is here taken over into that configuration into the owner field, which then also immediately correct. And I have to provide 
my DOI credentials in order to talk with GitHub. As I said, the same is also possible with a Bitbucket plugin to communicate with the Bitbucket team or uh, find the repositories there. And then we want to give it a display name and that are XWay API management APIs. So, and you can also give it a description. So then I'm filtering down. I'm not happy with these behaviors and I'm adding an additional behavior that I would like to filter by name. And I would like to include only um, repositories that are named like so. So that means a dash, API dash. So that means you can have a centralized place where all of your API projects are in, but maybe you would like to limit uh, that only a few of them are handled in, in by that workflow I'm creating right now. You can leave all the other fields by default. And now what happens immediately is that this organizational folder is now starting to scan for repositories. And you see here on the left, later on, you can manually scan for new repositories or you can, um, or of course it is um, scheduled once per day by default. Now it has identified all my repositories and it has seen there is an API, Imagine API demo, and there's another one, the Sample API project. So there's one more thing I need to do, or I need to tell um, Jenkins to, to, to work properly, but I will come back to that later because then it becomes more clear. Um, let's have a look into what has been created so far. Um, you see that based on the repositories discovered, we have two, let's say, subflows inside that folder. And I can now go into that folder and I see that there are support for branches. And I can now have a look into what happens, the last success. And I can go into the console output and see how that API has been replicated. Before we do that, I go into that sample API project, which I have checked out here locally. And um, this is the desired API config, which is by intention very simple to make it easy to follow. So that means we have the name of the API defined, the exposure path, which is used as a key. Uh, we have the state of the API, my version. And of course, the API definition is just the public available pet store swagger definition. And I have added an icon, a, a logo to my API. Okay. Then we have the Jenkins file which creates the pipeline you have seen on Jenkins um, automatically. And we have only two steps that we are checking out the code from that Git repository, and then we are calling Maven. And for that reason, Maven must be configured on Jenkins. In my case, Maven is configured with that version and it, it's getting then, it becomes available to my agent um, by that reference. And then there is a pom file and that POM file controls my artifact, um, artifact ID or my artifact itself, because this is the, the package which will be later on when the API is, is ready to be released. It will be released, it will be, maybe become version one, and then it goes into the release repository, and then it gets promoted to all non-dev stages. Um, then I have defined two properties. This is the API configuration file, which is the one we have seen already. And we have the stage. The stage means on which API management solution, on which API management stage that API should be promoted. I'm supposing to be on the development stage at the moment. In all higher stages, that stage field would contain production, pre-production, Q&A, et cetera, PP. And this is the, the missing piece which I have not yet fully explained, but I will do it in a minute, how this is referenced by the pipeline or how this is used. Then we have a plugin here, uh, which can take the API um, project and create a, a package and put that package on Nexus or on Artifactory. And here, this is the plugin, which is calling Swagger Promote by executing a Java call. And then we are handing over to that Java call the API config file from above, and we are saying that API should go on stage uh, API env. And then we have to, uh, not we have, but this is for me just set in case I would like to enforce something. 
So this is how the API workflow is configured. And now we can go how this looks at runtime based on the initial execution. So um, let's have a look. Using credentials GitHub, it has checked out the repository so that we have all the code from here available locally. And then you see the commit message I have used that I have the last time added, just changed the version of my API for any reason. And then the important thing is that Swagger Promote is executed. It takes, um, it, you, you know, it now takes in the API configuration file and within that anti stage. And let's first talk about the stage. You see that we, that Swagger Promote is loading an environment property file from a certain location. And this location, just have a look what, what is inside that file. We can say cut. And now you see that the API management system, that API should be replicated to, and is named API env, contains a host local host, the username and the password. And um, there is a special thing um, which is explained in the documentation what that means. And the idea, of course, is to have more files of this purpose on, on production system. For instance, you would have another one, which is, which is then called um, env dot, uh, maybe pod dot properties. And inside that property file, you would have a different host, which is then your product API manager.com or as an example, API manager, just as an example. And then you would have uh, credentials, um, that kind of stuff. That's, and these credentials, of course, are not shown or not visible to the API developer because um, they are maintained by the centralized team responsible for the Jenkins. And um, so now we, you could theoretically promote APIs into a production environment. There are more options you can set up for an environment in that production file, but these are the, the settings you have just seen are just a very basic example to say host username password. And these information is used to know where to send that API. Then the next thing is that we are loading the API definition, which was part of our configuration file. We are communicating with the API manager, and then we are replicating that API into the API manager. And when reloading my API catalog, you see there's now a new pet store API having the version 1.01. .01. I can even go and open up that API in API portal and try it out. Um, not sure if it's working. Okay, um, and now whenever you do a change in your API or in your API definition, or you have a more sophisticated project and you check in the code, now let's say we are changing the API to version 1.0, uh, 1.2.0, and uh, maybe we are doing and say Swagger or op yes, Pet Store, uh, Open API 3.0. Let's say if I can find that, yeah, it looks good. And this is raw. Let's say we would like to take the Open API 3.0 as an example instead of 2.0 and replicate that API as the major version change. And now if I check in the code and say, this is my new desired state, uh, updated API to 3.0, coming to master, push that. Now, if Jenkins and uh, your Git repository is synchronized and webhooks are in place, then the Jenkins pipeline would automatically run. In my case, I have to um, execute that manually and say, I would like to build now. It's running console output. It's checking out the most recent code. You see updated API version to 3.0 and let's see what happens. And now the API has been updated to use the most or the 
AIC version has been updated and the API definition itself has also been updated. Now based on uh, version 3.0, there is now the choice to have the um, server. Okay, that with that concludes the demo. Um, one more thing I forgot to mention um, concerning that, um, that location of that files. Um, it has used that location here to find the configuration files because on every agent that is running Swagger Promote as part of the Maven plugin, uh, Swagger Promote Home, the environment variable Swagger Promote has to be configured. This is used to look up um, the location and inside that location, you have to have that configuration file and inside that configuration folder and inside that con folder, um, you have the environment properties. Okay, now really with that, the demo concludes.